This is Louis D. Fresh bringing it to you on a Sunday. What we're going to be talking about in the fish segment of our YouTube channel, we're finally going to get to starting to talk about the water parameters. That's going to be a playlist, water parameters. We're going to be talking about pH, ammonia, nitrate, nitrates, we're talking about temperature, etc., etc., etc. So uh, about pH is the, is the buzzword that everybody says, so what's your pH like? Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say, oh, I check my pH three, four times a week. No, I, I know you're supposed to check it once a week, once a month. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Bad, bad, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Louis D. Fresh. Bad, bad. But um, I have no need. Everything seems to be alive. Everything has been growing. Everything has been doing its thing. But uh, let's check it out because I know it is very important. So what is it? What is pH in an aquarium? This you can find on my social media this week, this past week. It is a way to measure whether the aquarium has, is acidic or alkaline. There is a scale that is used. It's usually between one, zero and 14. Zero through seven is considered acidic and seven through 14 is considered alkaline. Most tropical fish, freshwater now, we're not talking about salt, freshwater tropical fish like it between 6.8 and 7.8 but that is just a general blanket statement there are many many uh differences when we start talking about uh varieties of fish you you will see that i will talk about extremes but for right now general blanket statement they like 6.8 7.8 now the reason we talk about ph in a freshwater fish tank is that because if it becomes too acidic the mucus on the gills that's where they breathe uh, thickens and it restricts the level of oxygen that can enter. A simple remedy for that would be to add small, keyword, small amounts of baking soda to make it more alkaline. The same holds true if uh, aquarium water is too alkaline. The, it, could, it could burn the skin of a fish. And one of my very favorite things to do uh, when you're, uh, is to add driftwood and that usually neutralizes or makes the water slightly soft or acid. So that usually does the trick. Now that I've spoken about that, about pH, right? We're going to actually try to do a pH test on some water. Uh, and I haven't done it beforehand because I, I like to completely uh, be surprised. And I know people are like, oh, see, and I told you it always was like this. No, I, I don't do that. I like to, to, to show it as it is. I might be completely right, I might be completely wrong. So let's go outside and tell you what I'm talking about. All right, I am back outside. Louis D. Fresh is outside. And I'm gonna take three, I already took, they're on my, um, on my little uh, table there. Uh, three, three specimens. The reason I'm showing three specimens is it because I want to show you that people always say, oh, you can just grab something from the lake or the stream or the river or whatever and just stick it in your tank. I might be wrong, but we're going to find out right now. There are different per water parameters for which, from each little from each place where you get uh, water from. So that's why I'm taking three specimens. Let me show you. The first specimen I'm taking is from here. This is the lake, which I constantly show you, uh, which is, uh, I love this thing. This is uh, my, my learning tool. And I took the water right from here. And you can tell it's also tadpole season uh, as the tadpoles are gathering there. I took the water right from here. Uh, we shall see uh, in a minute how the pH is in the lake. It is late April, so it's starting to get hot. It's about 91 degrees already. This is ridiculous. But anyway, the, the thrills of living in South Florida. Hold on. All right, now as I carefully press these buttons, because you know, I'm, I'm very good with these buttons. <laughs> and uh, specimen number two is gonna be tap water. I, I have told you, and I'm probably gonna say it again, I'll probably do a video on it, and we're talking about water and blah, blah, blah. Uh, tap water is not just water. Water, tap water is usually, uh, check with your local uh, city or country or whatever it is, but they usually have chlorine, copper, in order for you to, uh, to bathe in it, to wash your dishes in it, uh, to dare I say drink it, um, because water is not water. Tap water is very different. So uh, let me show you an example of where I got this tap water from. This, I just turned it on. This is the tap water that I actually use for my fish tank. It is right here. This is the tap water that's used, uh, that runs throughout my house uh, for the toilet, for the for wash your hands, to cook. I never thought of that. Cook, all that fun stuff. So this is the water that I'm using to test 
this has all kinds of chlorine and all kinds of stuff in it so that's why i use the tap water conditioner before it actually goes into my fish tank now my dogs think i'm completely insane walking around the house and out in the lake and all that but that's all right uh, i'm sitting down because I'm, i took the third specimen from this fish tank now in a in a perfect world my new fish tanks should be coming in next weekend, uh, the weekend of May 1st, 2nd. But uh, again, in a perfect world, life changes, who knows, but they, I should be getting them. Uh, and, these, and, this is pro and this has been the best tank, and, uh, and I can't lie, I'm probably gonna use all the plants here in the new tank. And I'm gonna use all the water from the three fish tanks in the new tank. You don't wanna just put in, just shock everybody with new absolutely fresh water remember you, you need the bacteria you need their for lack of a better word their crap to uh to so they it can they they feels like home and you're gonna see that hopefully with the ph testing so the water that i'm gonna be using with the new tanks the majority of it is gonna be their old water and this is the tank uh again i think the very best tank that i have that i'm going to use all these plants uh, and obviously all the fish from all the other tanks as well, but I think I'm only using the plants uh, from this tank. Uh, all the fish from all the tanks are gonna go into the new tank, but just these particular plants are gonna be put in, and I know John, who's making these uh, fish tanks, uh, is gonna get me some plants as well. But I took the water that I'm going to uh, test from here. Now one of the things I love about uh, education, uh, because you know this channel is both fish and college, one of the things I love about education is that everything has connections. If you've noticed, if you look back, I, I mean, I've been doing this, I guess, since the end of September. Uh, if you look back, you'll see that, I, that I've spoken about the lake at length. You'll see that I have spoken about uh, about the algae in the, in the lake. You will notice all the, these connections. And now we're connecting the lake and the aquariums. So everything is, is interconnected. So let me, let me show you. And now, pun intended, uh, those of you who have gone away for college will recognize the red solo cup. If you have no idea what the little joke is, then you don't need to know. Uh, the L stands for lake. The T stands for, tank. Uh, no, tap water. See how good I am? Lake, tap water, and aquarium. And I got this particular test kit, and Kali says hello. Uh, this test kit from Beverly's uh, Aquarium, uh, Beverly's Pet Center, there we go, in Pembroke Pines. If you don't recall what I'm talking about, look back on my archives and you will see I did a video on Beverly's Pet Center in Pembroke Pines, Florida. And we are going to check out this, uh, this pH stuff. Now, something that I highly recommend is a general rule of thumb, whether it be college stuff or fish stuff, read the directions. I know uh, we're too quick to throw directions out, but it's important to read the directions and, dare I say, follow the directions. Uh, in this case, what we're using is, we are using this solution, this particular solution uh, for pH, and we're going to fill the water up to that white line, not past it, not under it, to that white line. And uh, this is a master test kit. So it tests uh, things like pH, ammonia, nitrate and nitrate, which we'll talk about in a separate video. But uh, with pH, this is what we're gonna be focusing on, pH. And the directions say fill it to the line and to uh, put three drops. Shake it vigorously and then you should see uh, six is my, 6.0 is acidic and way down here 7.6 is alkaline. We're hoping it's somewhere in here, the 6.8, 7.0, right around there. So let's check it out. You will see with the lake, and I just did the test, the pH is very, very alkaline, very alkaline, around 7.6, if not more so, uh, very, very alkaline. So therefore, uh, there must be a special type of fish that has adopted itself to that because it will burn regular uh, tropical fish, uh, its skin. So it's very, very alkaline, that is the lake. As I said, I did not try this beforehand. So this is the tap water, and we're talking to right here the pH, which is the first column, and you'll see that uh, the tap water is even more alkaline, uh, amazingly. Uh, it is really, really alkaline, holy frijoles. 
Um, I guess that must be the chlorine and copper that they infuse in it. So that is the tap water. And finally, here's my aquarium water. And you will notice that it is indeed around the 6.8, I would say 6.8 uh, area, 6.8, yeah, 7.0 at best. I'd say more than 6.8. And that is the ideal range, and thank God this worked out, uh, for your fish, for your tropical fish. And so, and I really think that's why I use, uh, wait, okay, well, anyway, I'm done with the pH. Let me, uh, let me flip it around. And that's why I use driftwood, as I mentioned before, in the, uh, in the PowerPoint slide or the Canva slide, and why I use lots of plants, real, like not from the lake, but actual plants that you get from, the, from a fish store, or you water them or whatever, and it really has made quite a difference, and you can tell that's why my fish are thriving. I re Truth, I really haven't lost a fish, maybe one or two, since uh, 2017, since the hurricane of Hurricane Irma. Uh, so I, I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm adding my bacteria, which I'll talk about some other time. Uh, I got my driftwood. Uh, that's why I'm gonna use the water from all my tanks, especially for the, for the, uh, for the, uh, for the fish. And uh, I, fortunately, it worked. It showed you why I really don't check the pH, because the pH is, is fantastic. And, and that's because I do my usual water changes, I use natural plants, I put in some driftwood, and again, that's why it shows why you just can't throw in any old fish or take, throw in, put in the old tap water, blah, blah, blah. You have to do things properly and we'll eventually talk about cycling a tank and all that. But that's enough. Uh, thank you and have a great day.